Uh, thanks again, everybody, for making it out. Uh, today we have Rigoberto Flores uh, from the Citadel, who will be talking to us about some enumerations on non-decreasing dike paths. Go ahead, Rigoberto. Okay. By the way, I, I'm not used to, to listening to Rigoberto <laughs> too, too much. I used to say Rigo. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Like, I'm not used to. And then, like, uh, people say Thomas. People prefer Tom, right? Uh, I prefer my short name. And then, uh, okay, uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, the invitation here uh, with you. And I enjoy a lot your seminars. And now it's online, which is much better for me. Okay, uh, this is uh, our work with uh, several co-workers. One is Eva, and actually this is a picture that Eva and Lazlo were here in uh, how many years? Eight? God, it's a lot. Okay, and this is Jose Luis and uh, the Andrew. I don't know where it's located, maybe in China, somewhere. And then, uh, okay, those are my co-authors. And uh, I want to start this, this talk uh, with the uh, few Nazi numbers, but it's supposed that will be about a uh, path, but I want to start few Nazi numbers because Fibonacci numbers is present in many, many results that we had here. And, uh, and, and Fibonacci numbers actually are very beautiful and nice that they are present here. Okay, let's, let's start with the, uh, the idea. What is a, a dig word? And a dig word is, is a word in the XY alphabet and uh, the length same number of y's, same number of x. And the idea is that every initial subpath should have no more y's than x. So if you see here, satisfy the condition. And this part also, see that. But in this part, no. Here, so far is good. But in this part, we have more y's than x. So this is not a big word. Uh, if, if you choose a, a length eight and you do all possible combinations to satisfy the conditions that I gave you, we have 14 uh, dig words. And that, that 14 is actually uh, a special number. Maybe you recognize that number. Oh, why did? I don't know why. Give me one second. Okay. And then, um, there it is. And uh, also you can represent uh, big words in, into the balance parentheses where the X are open parentheses and Y's are the closed parentheses. There is another representation for big words and we call dig path. And dig path is just the geometric representation of big words where the all X is actually representing the north east steps and Y is representing the south is a steps, and we have here the representation of the uh, path. And the 14 deep words, there is a vegetation, of course, in between the path, path here. And here we have also 14 paths. And uh, there is another representation, if you want, uh, also vegetation, is uh, deep words and uh, binary trees. And there is also more representation using trees, but here I brought just the binary trees. And I'm gonna show you how is the binary trees. The other is more popular than this. For that reason, I want to show you how the representation. Suppose that we want this uh, represented as a tree. So it's the number third. And every north is a step is uh, an edge that is going, this is ordered. So it's going to the left. So if you go up, 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 this is going down, down, down. And when you go here, south is a step, this is going to the right and here. And this is another down. And because it's binary, this is busy. So we have to go to the previous one and go here down. And this is up. So from here, you go to the right. And this is down, go here. And this is another down, and this is basic, you go here. So in that way, you can represent 
using binary trees the dig path. And um, so to count the dig paths, uh, we use a Catalan numbers. And I told you before, 14 was a special number uh, because it's the fourth uh, Catalan number. Now, because uh, we want to study uh, several aspects, I'm going to talk to you about some of the aspects that we are interested in here. One is, for example, uh, the peaks. And peaks is uh, the x and y, you see here. Or valleys are y and x, you see here. And uh, a pyramid is a subword or subpath of this form. And uh, we have, this is a pyramid, but this is maximal. But here we have another pyramid that is maximal but that is within a maximal pyramid. Now we are going to define what we want to study here today is the non-decreasing dig path. So what we are going to do is we are going to, from left to right, we are going to collect all vertices of all valleys and you select the Y coordinate of that vertex here, Y coordinate. And if the Y coordinates forming non-decreasing sequence, we are going to say that this is a, a non-decreasing dig path. And that's what we are going to study today, only non-decreasing dig path. So we are going to use this notation whenever we see D, uh, calligraphic D N, uh, means the set of all non-decreasing dig path or length to N. And in this case, if you count, we have 13. 13, and in the previous case, we have 14. So some, some of the decreases are not, uh, uh, some of the dig paths are not decreasing. And in 1987, uh, Barcucci at all, they proved that the total number of non-decreasing dig paths is given by this Fibonacci number, as I told you at the beginning many times the Fibonacci numbers are here. And uh, this is 13, of course, it's a Fibonacci number. And now this is Barcucci, but now uh, the idea is if we have the set of non-decreasing dig paths, what we want to ask or we want to work. So there are many aspects that we can ask. One is, for example, count the number of peaks, right? Or maybe we can count uh, the number of valleys, or we can count the height of peaks or height of valleys, or the area under the, the, the path, or we can just the area of every pyramid. For area of, of every pyramid, we say that is the weight of the pyramid. So there are many questions that we can ask, but here I'm just pick a few. And I'm going to show you what is the technique that we use to prove that. And the same technique most of the time works for all cases, right? Uh, yes, depends on the case, but it's the same technique. So here is, we are going to, I pick uh, to work the natural number of peaks in non-decreasing dig path. And we say, okay, the total number of peaks in non-decreasing dig path is given by this number. Again, you see if you match, Fibonacci, and it's a combination. And the number of peaks we, is basically the number of pyramids, but let's count pick one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and so on, and we obtain what? 32. And the question is how to prove that that is true. So this is the, the proof that I'm going to show you here. There's only once, and the other uh, will use the same technique. So we are going to take a DN and we are going to uh, separate that into two sets. One is B and the other is A. The four, the, the four means is the length, right? Because this is length eight. So this is four and four. So, and in this part, we are going to have all paths that they have at least one valley at the ground level. So at least one valley at the ground level. And in this part, we are going to have all paths that they don't have valleys at ground level. Later, 
we are going to refer this with another name. Here we call BN, but the other name later will be primitive path, but not yet. So let's, let's count first this part, how many peaks here. And the idea is because we don't have values at ground level, we can take out, delete the, this step up and this step down, and we send that one into this. We do the same here and for all of this. And when we do that, we observe that we keep the same number of peaks. So these variations doesn't affect the number of peaks. And this variation just send BN into the previous set of non-decreasing deep path. So instead to count the values, uh, the peaks here, we are going to count the peaks here. And we are going to say, okay, let PN, uh, the total number of peaks in DN minus one. So, because this variation, now we know how many peaks are there here, is PN minus one. Now let's work with the set A. In the set, set A, we subdivide again the, the, the set into more sets. And first we are going to say, okay, these are all paths with the first pyramid has height one, height one. And this is, you see, length four and height one. This is the first pyramid, height two, and this is height three. So there is a natural variation from this set into this set is just you delete the first pyramid. And so you send all of this after the deletion into this. And you send all of this after the deletion into this and same thing with this. So this gives us an idea how to count the total number of peaks. So to count the total number of peaks here is basically the total number of this part. But we know the answer for this because it's one of the P's, right? But after that, we had to add what? One for this, one for this, one for this, one for this, one for this. But that addition is actually equal to the cardinality of this. So now we have the total numbers here, plus the number of peaks after the variation, and plus the, the number of the first pyramid. So basically, PN is equal to this, and when we simplify, we obtain the, the number that we had before. Okay, now the second, the second proof is using a generating function. And same idea is also works for many, for many other topics that we study here. So for the generating function, we need some parameters. So first of all, let's say that the cardinality of Dn is this. And we are going to say LP, like the semi-length of the, of the path. And now we have the generating function. So the generating function is, this is depending on the length. So, and we say, okay, the path here in the end, but when we have this uh, simplified, is basically this cardinality. So this is the generating function for uh, the total number of non-decreasing the path of length the, uh, n, and uh, okay, let me, let me go a little bit here. So if we have length one, we have one pyramid. When the length is four, but semi-length is two, we have two. And when the semi-length is three, we have five. And it looks like it's few on a number. Uh, of course, we knew that answer before, but that is uh, using um, generating functions. But that isn't what we want to prove. We want to prove is just the total number of peaks, not how many uh, non-decreasing deep path. So let's construct the generating function for uh, the total number of peaks. So this is, we need a, an extra parameter and we say this is the number of peaks and we need a variable to track the number of uh, the peaks in, in the path and we put this. And now this is what we are going to use to count the total number of peaks. And this is the generating function. And for the generating function, when we set this equal to one, we obtain the, the total number of non-decreasing deep paths here, this is the generating function. Okay, let's see how is the proof. 
of this generating function. So the proof of the generating function is, you remember how we decompose um, the path before. So we decompose the path in two ways. One is we have all paths that they don't have any valley at the ground level. And the other path that they have at least one valley at ground level is here. So it means this pyramid cannot be empty. So because we want one valley at least. So this is, we need at least one length equal to X. And we don't want this uh, path be no empty. So we are going to say, uh, consider this here in case it's this empty. So we have this. Now with this, we can create the generating function. And the generating function is for here, the length is one and the tracking of peaks is one. So we say this is X, Y. For this part here, we don't have peaks, but we have length. And this is the length and times the generating function for all uh, paths in this way, we put in this form. And in this part, so we are tracking the number of peaks here, but the number of peaks is only one. And the number of pyramids, this is fixed. So we need one X, X. And the other is maybe uh, or one or two or three or infinite. So this is one, one minus X to count all pyramids here times the generating function for this. And when we simplify this, we obtain the generating function that we were looking for. So that is basically what we do for all, all proof that we have here. We try to use the same technique in, uh, in both cases. One uh, we call generating function, the other is a, a combinatorics proof. Okay, but as uh, for all these papers that we have been working, we want always connection with other uh, objects of combinatorics. And uh, the first connection that we have here, very natural, you are going to see why it's natural, is using a polyuminoids. And there are two, there are many definitions, of course, of polyuminoids. One is given by math words, right? That is a generalization of the domino cam set. Here. And the other is just a set of squares here. Uh, one uh, together, yeah, you put together. But what happened? We need that when we go around, right? And the path around of this or, or cycle, they don't overlap. That is the, the, the first definition of polyno and the other is from Mark Ward. Our interest is in the general polyno. Our interest is a special polyominoes. And one is the column convex. And the column convex means if when we have a vertical line within the polyomino, that vertical lines should be totally included in the polyomino. So this is uh, column convex, but this is not because if we have a vertical line here, that is not totally included in the polyomino. So this is not column convex. And we need directed, directed means from the lowest point on the left, you can go wherever you want with a path, but this path is using only north or east step. So it satisfies this condition, we say it's directed. And this is good because wherever you want to go, you go up, 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 this, up, this. But here is not, because if you want to go to this part, you can go up, up, but you cannot reach this point. So what we are interested here is just DCCP or DCC polymino. And let's see what is the relationship in between this DCC polyminoes and uh, non decreasing the path. First of all, uh, Barcucci, uh, he proved that the total number of DCC polyminoes uh, is a Fibonacci number. But this is not a Fibonacci number, it's this Fibonacci number which is actually the same Fibonacci numbers that counts non-decreasing the path. So when we have one square is one, all polyminoes, when we have two squares is two, and when we have three squares is five, and we have one, two, three, four is 13. So that is what he proved, uh, actually they proved. 
Okay, later, uh, Deutsch and Prodinger, they found a connection in between this and uh, non-decreasing the path. And the variation was given by this. They create levels and they said, okay, this is the level zero, level one, level two, level three, level four. And that is what we have here. Level zero and uh, upper level four. Same thing for this, level one, two, three, and so on. And with this, uh, they actually he proved this by example, but this is very simple, right? Very simple. And the idea is you start from zero to upper level four, and then you go from four to one and from one to three, and from one to three, and from three to two, from two to five, from five to two, from two to five, from five to three, from three to six, this is six, from six to three, and then from six to three and three to five. And then this is the last one. And that's to complete the path, you just send that one to zero. That is uh, the vegetation that the uh, Prodinger and um, Deutsch prove it. And the idea is we have the total number of peaks. And the first question is, is, is there an easy, easy, very easy uh, interpretation of the total number of peaks here and the total number of uh, something here? And we say the something is what? The total number of columns. And that is the vegetation. So, so the total number of peaks here is actually equal to the total number of columns in polyominoes. So we see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, uh, eight, nine, and ten. And that's what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten. So, and this is interesting, that connection is because at this point, there are a lot of open questions in polyminoes. And we believe, we don't know yet, but we believe that maybe instead of proof that questions in polyamino, maybe it's possible to prove that questions here in, in non deficit the path. That is a future project to work. Okay, remember that I told you a little bit about primitive path. Now let's see another uh, idea here to count. And it's the primitive path and primitive path we are going to say that a no decreasing the path is primitive if the path doesn't have valleys at the ground level. So all of these are primitive paths. And the total number of primitive paths is a few Natchez numbers. Yeah, it makes sense because in the previous uh, results, we proved that when we delete one here, it's actually uh, in vegetation with the dn minus one. So that is basically the proof. Now, the idea is to count the total number of non decreasing paths that are concatenation with k primitive path. In this case, this is the dig path that are concatenation of just one primitive path. But here, this is length is four, but two primitive paths. You say one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And this is three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and this is four. So how we count that uh, again, using, we use both the generating functions and uh, recursive relations. And using the generating functions, we have this uh, generating function and the closed formula for that, that generating function is given by this. And uh, same idea for the proof. Okay. I'll be back on this, but let me, let me introduce first another idea. I'll be back on this in, uh, in maybe in five minutes. So we are going to find the connections into non decreasing path or a primitive path and reordinal arrays. I'm going to introduce here the idea of reordinal array. A reordinal array is basically a generalization of the Pascal triangle. So uh, people who discovered this were working with Pascal triangle and they found that it was possible to generalize this. And this is what is in a lower triangular matrix and that satisfies uh, some conditions. 
And the first condition is that the first entry here never, never is zero. And the rows here, or let's say columns, we, the people who discovered this, they call this one um, external column, and they call this internal columns. So we are going to generate the external columns in one way and the internal columns in another way. So we need a vector uh, with the first entry you know, equal to zero, and here, whatever, right? Or you can use generating functions and the entries here of these vectors are the coefficients of the variable x. And here we are going to use another infinite vector and, or a generating function. So how is the any entry here? Let's suppose this is square, the I brought here. This is square, we are going to do a, a combination. So we multiply, if we want this square, we have to go one before on the left. So this is the square, we go here. And we multiply this green times a zero. This plus this green times a one, this green times a two. And because all of this is zero, we, we don't care about that part. Basically is what we are doing here. You see this part. And we combine all of them and we obtain the square. So we have here the square. Now in this part, we do the same, but in this case, we start from one left. No, here we start from one up, one up, and we want this square. So we multiply all of this by, so this times Z, Z0, C1, C2, and we have this. Now, let me give you an example of that. So the sample is this. So using this generating function and using this generating function, we obtain these vectors. And if you want 11, if we want 11, we just multiply seven times one and four times one and we obtain 11. And if we want 13, you multiply five times one, four times one, three times one, you combine and we obtain 13. So now, there is one construction, but there is another construction. And the other construction is if we have two generating functions, uh, G and F, but this, we need one condition. X is always a common factor of this generating function. And this is just the independent, is no zero, right? Independent is no zero. So we need a condition. And we do this, the first column is G times the generating function raised to zero. The second column, actually column zero, right? The first column is G, it, the generating function raised to one and so on. And that way we obtain the columns of the reordered array. So the reordered array is basically defined using the this generating function and this other generating function where the columns are here with the conditions that I told you before. Okay, what happened with the back to the total number of paths that can be written as a concatenation of primitive path is given by this. So if you observe here, we have one generating function and support that we don't have this power, right? Just this. And we have another generating function. So this is giving us an idea that if we vary k, we obtain f, and this is my G. So with this, we can create the reordered array. So now let's go back. So we raise this to zero. We obtain this generating function, this other generating function, and so on. So when we take the coefficient of this and we put all of them here, all coefficient of this and we put here, and so on, we have now the reordered array uh, for the total number of path that can be written as k, a concatenation of k uh, primitive path. So if you observe here, so this is uh, a concatenation of one primitive path is five, is here. This is concatenation of two primitive path is here. Concatenation of three primitive path is here and four is here. So this is the reordered array for the concatenation of k primitive path. And the question is, how can 
why is this important? It's important not only because we can collect all that information in a matrix, and it's because we can find uh, some properties. So we are going to find some properties or identities for this using reordered array. So remember that 13 is the addition of all of this, right? But five is T1, uh, four is T2, and three is T3, and the other is one. So how is that? So now the first identity, so for this, is because the addition of all of this is equal to this part, we say, okay, the first identity for this is that T M plus one, one is actually the addition of all this, I mean this. So the other identity is because this is obtained adding these two. So this is actually this equivalent to this part is this number plus this number. So using mm, big path, and reordered array, we can obtain identities for other uh, uh, combinatorial objects. Okay, that is one. Now let's go to another uh, topic that we also counted here is the weight of pyramids. This is very brief, very, very short. And just I want to give you more ideas how how we did in this uh, in this paper. So the, the the idea is we are going to evaluate the area of this pyramid, or we can say the weight, and the weight we are going to define, or is the height or semi-length, right? Semi-length of the pyramid. So this is weight one. The semi-length is here is two, the weight is two, and the weight is one. So here it is. Now we, we defined uh, G and K is, this is the length of the past, and we say is the, the number of pyramids at the floor level, that can be uh, oh the weight k, right, in a dm. So a floor level, and we want length four and weight one. How many there are there? There are thirteen, and you can see here the when you count, you obtain thirteen. But thirteen is a Fibonacci number, so done. Uh, length uh, weight two, and weight two is here, weight two, and the total is what? five, again, Fibonacci number. And weight three, and this is the weight, is three, and is two. And the last one is weight four, which is one. So using the same idea, we find the reordered array uh, for that um, counting. And now from here, you can figure out what is the uh, Generating function for this part, right? For G and K is basically this times X to the N or to the K. So we have the uh, reordered array. And we can find similar properties using the same technique that we did before. But this is very brief. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. So we were looking uh, for more ideas to work in non decreasing the path and then searching for more ideas to work. In non decreasing the path, we read a paper of a solid. It's actually not a paper, it's a thesis in 2018. And she uh, defined uh, a word in this alphabet. And the word in this alphabet, she defines peaks. And we say, oh, wait a moment. She's defining peaks, and we have peaks in our path. Let's see what happens. And then she defines peaks in, in words in this way. This is a peak, and this peak is, is a peak if the number that is before is less than this, and the number that is after that is less than this, so that is a peak. This is not a peak. Five is a peak because two is less than five, and this is less than five. This is also a peak. So, and she also defines what is a symmetric peak. And she says that symmetric peak is if the two here, the two numbers, the two values here, are the same, that is symmetric. So these two are the same. This is symmetric, but this is not symmetric. And she defines also uh, 
asymmetric peak. This is asymmetric because these two values are not the same. So the idea is how to extend this composite to non decreasing the path. And we did this, we defined a symmetric peak because we have peak, but we need to define symmetric. And to define symmetric peak, we say, okay, a peak is symmetric if the maximal pyramid containing the peak, the two values that are forming the maximal pyramid, they are at the same level. So this is symmetric. This is also symmetric, this is symmetric, another symmetric, and another symmetric. And asymmetric peaks, if, if the two values are not, so we consider this a valley, right? And we consider also this a valley. So if the two values are not at the same level, so this is asymmetric. But when we were searching, uh, if this concept already exists in a deep path, we realized that nobody watched this uh, concept before in deep path, then we made the decision to work first this idea on deep path because it's more general. And then later, uh, after that, work this on non-decreasing deep path. And that's what we did. So these results is for, for deep path. And later, uh, actually we are working. Oh, we just submitted the paper. Yeah, I remember that. So uh, we did that for uh, non-decreasing. So using the technique, that we did before, but you see, before we, we say, okay, all paths that they have a pyramid. In this case, we don't say all paths they have a first pyramid. We say all paths that they have what? One primitive path, right? So that's how we divide. Using that idea, we found uh, this uh, recursive relation, and then we simplify and give us this crazy <laughs> recursive relation. And um, this is our, uh, Catalan numbers, Catalan numbers. And then using this recursive relation, we found uh, this uh, total number of symmetric peaks. And if you count here, all of these are symmetric and we found 23. And how to find asymmetric? That is very easy because since we know from literature, the total number of peaks and we subtract the symmetric peaks, we obtain the asymmetric peaks. So that is not complicated. And uh, using that generating uh, the recursive relation, we found the generating function and we found a closed formula. What we did after this, we extend this to non decreasing the path, same ideas, but the Generating functions in non-decreasing deep path were a little bit more different, and we also introduced other concepts. And now the paper is uh, uh, we submitted that paper. I think last week or two weeks ago for publication. And I think that's it. Thank you, Rigo. If we could all thank our speaker in, in some way, and then we'll open it up for some questions. Okay, do we have any questions for our speaker? Okay, if there are no questions, then um, before we go, I want to say that next week, the seminar due to some scheduling issues needs to get pushed back an hour. So we will be starting at this time at 3.30 instead of 2.30 next week. I'll say that in the email next week, but just letting everybody know uh, ahead of time. So thanks again, Rigo, and thanks everybody, and have a good weekend.